Get us at warp speed towards the continuation of our mission to truthfully go where no news will have been going. <laughs> And from TASS News, Russia-Africa conference shows multipolar world official. A number of those African countries that have come to that have come demonstrated these states readiness to recognize what was unfolding and to treat positively as well as not to regard Russia as an isolated country but as a reliable partner. Russian State Duma Deputy Speaker Alexander Babakov said. The Russia-Africa International Parliamentary Conference, which was held in Moscow on March 19th through 20th, has shown that a multipolar world has already been shaped. Alexander Babakov, Russian State Duma Deputy, Deputy Secretary and Chairman of the Conference's Organization Committee, told reporters, The result of the conference is that the multipolar world has already been shaped, or has already shaped. A number of those African countries that have come demonstrated the state's readiness to recognize what was unfolding and to treat positively, as well as not to regard Russia as an isolated country but as a reliable partner. There's no isolation of Russia either, the lawmaker stressed. The second Russia-Africa International Parliamentary Conference was held on platform or on the platform of the State Duma. Over 40 official parliamentary delegations from African countries took part in the event. The conference was aimed at strengthening parliamentary and cooperation within African countries in the context of multipolar world, developing relations and elaborating common approaches to legal regulation in the field of economy, science, and education and security. The conference was a preparatory event in the second Russia-Africa summit to be held on July 27 through 28 in St. Petersburg. The first international conference took place in Moscow in 2019. And from modern diplomacy, international conference strengthens multifaceted relations between Russia and Africa. The International Parliamentary Conference Russia-Africa, held on 1920 March, has at least focused on complexities and contradictions of the emerging new global order, the role of Russia-Africa Russia alliance against growing Western imperialism, and set the limits of Africa's ex expectations from Russia. The conference was to build further on previous comprehensive political dialogues between parliaments of Africa and Russia. President Vladimir Putin said at the plenary session of the International Parliamentary Conference Russia African Multipolar World on March 20th, reminded that the first Russian African summit held in October 2019 in Sochi was very productive and made it possible to no noticeably revive our ties with African states intensified business interaction, exchanges in the cultural and humanitarian spheres. That the partnership between Russia and African countries has gained additional momentum and is already reaching a qualitatively new level. He emphatically pointed out that the states of Africa are constantly increasing their weight and role in world affairs and are asserting themselves more and more confidently in politics and the economy. We're convinced that Africa will become one of the leaders in the emerging new multipolar world. They're all or there are all objective prerequisites for this, and there's about 1.5 billion people live or who live in Africa. A huge resource base is concentrated, almost a third of the world's mineral reserves. Uh, I would presume that this text has been translated, so I'll, I'll try my best to adapt it. If a bit, some of the grammar is a little bit, um, it has holes in it. African countries are striving to pursue an independent and sovereign foreign and domestic policy, sometimes difficult problems, of their own as well. 
Russia and African countries uphold the norms of mor morality and social principles that are traditional for our, our peoples and oppose the neo-colonial ideology imposed from outside. By the way, many states of Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America adhere to similar positions and together make up the world's majority. We're ready to jointly shape the global agenda, work together to strengthen fair and equal interstate relations, and improve mechanisms for mutually beneficial economic cooperation. We're preparing in the most serious way for the second Russian-African summit, and of course a rich and meaningful agenda for the summit is being developed. It's planned to hold more than a hundred of the most diverse events, he said about the forthcoming Grand Summit plan for July. Africa's made a huge leap in its development in recent decades, but its potential's yet to be unlocked, noted Val Valentina Matvienko, Speaker of the Federation Council. Africa is a continent with great potential which is yet to be fully unlocked. A continent with a population approaching 1.5 billion. A continent which has made a huge leap in its development, not only economic, but also social and scientific in recent decades, she said at the Russia-Africa International Parliamentary Delegation, according to Matvienko. Africa's international prestige is also increasing. I think this is an absolutely objective and logical trend which the collective West, led by the United States, does not want to acknowledge. They want to preserve their superiority and role as a global hegemon, things that are becoming a thing of the past. They're reluctant to change their mentality of neocolonialism and are using well-known means of deterrence such as sanctions, threats, blackmail, double standards, and blatant hypocrisy, she noted. She stressed that Russia has always been committed to the principles of equality, mutual respect, the inherent right of each state to choose its own path of development, its own future without interference from the outside. Russia's cooperation mutually respectful and equal with African countries has been built on these principles for decades. Russia's friendship and cooperation with African countries is time-tested. That countries of the African continent have always been Russia's reliable partners and true allies. I'm convinced that it will continue like this. Our shared goal is to change the world for the better, to ensure the well-being and prosperity of the peoples of Russia and Africa, to spare no effort to ensure that hunger, dangers, diseases, and regional conflicts are extinguished, Matvienko added. Russian State Duma Speaker Vyacheslav Volodin, speaking at the plenary session, highlighted relations between Russia and Africa. It's necessary to emphasize Russia and African countries are equal allies and partners. Our relations have always been built on an unselfish basis on the principles of mutual respect, stressing that for Russia, L oh, and non-interference in domestic affairs, Volodin said, stressing that for Russia, the African continent's never been a subject of mercantile interest, use of labor, and raw material resources. However, according to the speaker, the United States and Europe have a different approach. Washington and Brussels seek to take control of Russia and African natural resources. In fact, they continue their colonial policy. They go to any measures, including force and terrorist nature, for their own benefit. The politician pointed out, it's not for Washington to teach us how to build relationships, be friends, and make plans for the future, Volodin pointed out. He, however, describes Africa as a continent of freedom-loving people and that friendship's a two-way street and that Russian and African countries are at a new stage. Understandably, therefore, Russian and African countries are united by shared goals. We stand together for building a multipolar world, just, just world, based on respect for traditions, culture, and history of the countries with which we're building mutually beneficial cooperation, Balogun said. Today, the African continent plays an important role in solving global and regional problems, and it will only grow, he said. Recall that despite illegal sanctions from Washington, Russia and African states are developing trade and economic cooperation. In particular, according to the politician, the trade turnover is growing, which at the end of last year amounted to $17.9 billion. While Russia and African parliament Parliamentarians continue forging solidarity against growing neo-colonial tendencies in Africa. Russia has also expressed readiness to push for Africa's economic developments by offering their legislative support. Legislators were convinced that parliaments could do a lot for the development of relations on the principles of respect, non-interference in international affairs of other states, and mutually beneficial cooperation. For comparison, 36 delegations from African countries took part in the first forum, which was held in 2019. This year, there were delegations from about 40 countries. Russia, contrary to Western assertions, doesn't isolate itself from the rest of the world. The increase in the number of participants confirms the special nature of friendly ties between Russia and Africa. Attempts by Washington and Brussels to isolate Africa and Russia have failed. Earlier during the first day, emphasized Chairman of the State Duma Vyacheslav Volodin, 
That, however, undeterred by the pressure from the United States to cancel Russia and their relationship, African parliamentarians have arrived in Moscow for two-day working gathering to methodically develop Russian-African relations in various fields. In addition to the political dialogue, they're also focusing on economic, cultural, humanitarian, and scientific cooperation. According to the plan, Russian parliamentarians and African colleagues fixed t- topical issues of the international parliament, legislative response to economic challenges, indivisible security capabilities and contributions of parliaments, and neocolonialism of the West, how to prevent the repetition of history. The objectives of the conference are to strengthen parliamentary cooperation with African countries in the conditions of formation of a multipolar world, to develop relations, and to develop common approaches to legal regulation in the economy, science, and education security. The following roundtables held organized. Legislative response to economic challenges. The modern economic challenges are crisis or crises caused by Western countries guided by the United States' numerous economic sanctions aimed at destroying the Russian economy introduced in violation of all international trade rules and foreign economic relations. At the same time, most African countries supported friendly relations with Russia. Russia and Africa's position coincided on many issues. (coughs) Unlike many Western countries, Russia does not have colonial experience and the contribution of the Soviet Union to the liberation of African countries from colonial dependence is also well known. Africa stands for an equal partnership, mutual economic interest, including investments, cooperation with p- in production chains, cooperation in strategic infrastructure projects, energy, medicine, and financial technologies. It's necessary to support the transformation processes of a multipolar world. Indivisible security, capabilities, and contributions of parliaments. Participants of the roundtable discussion on the topic indivisible security, capabilities, and contributions of parliaments thoroughly examined importance of sovereignty, protection, non-interference in the international affairs of other countries, fight against poverty, countering terrorism, and military biological threats. Both Russia and Africa have similar challenges, are similar in many ways. Both Russia and African parliamentarians have joined their efforts contribute to the development of effective proposals which would help resolve conflicts. The challenges that our friends from African countries and the challenges that the Russian Federation are facing today are similar in many ways. The world's developing rapidly and in this new world we want justice, equal rights, and multipolarity, said the Deputy Chairman of the State, Duma Petr Tolstoy, opening the discussion. The Speaker of the National Assembly of the Parliament of South Africa, Nosiviwe Mapisa Nkalkule, noted the importance of maintaining the values of humanity and tolerance towards each other. She recalled that during the COVID-19 pandemic, many countries preferred to care about their own safety, and as a result, African states did not receive enough vaccines and lost human lives. There are still issues of climate change, poverty, human rights, violations, and become a threat to peace and security, economy, and the peaceful existence of people around the world. We should support all humanity, and there should still be humanness in us and only in the case when we treat others as tolerantly as possible, stressed Nosaviwe Mapisa Nkakula. The president of the National Council of the Transition of the Republic of Guinea, Dansa Kuruma, noted that probable that the problem of imbalance in diplomatic relations in the context of neocolonialism, the unilateral approach has become the rule. It's important to take into account and respect the sovereignty of states, he explained and call for a more active fight against poverty since such situations when people do not have access to a minimum set of services leads to insecurity in such countries. Neocolonialism of the West, how to prevent the repetition of history. Here, Russia and African countries want equal world without imposition of Western paradigm of consciousness. Leonid Slutsky, leader of the LDPR faction, chairman of the Committee on International Affairs, opening the meeting, thanked African countries that despite the difficult times gathered around Russia as a forward in the movement towards a multipolar world. The first deputy chairman of the Committee on International Affairs, Vyacheslav Nikonov, emphasized that there's an overwhelming majority of people supporting these values of sovereignty, respect for each other, democracy, non-interference in the affairs of others, according to the African parliaments, who spoke at the roundtable, believes that by granting independence to African countries, 
colonialism still exists on the continent, including transnational companies and non-governmental organizations that have become its main instruments. According to most of them, it's necessary now to promote economic independence and diversity or, and diversify the economies. It's definitely an important factor in countering sanctions in the consolidation of society pursuing concrete development. But, unfortunately, after political liberation, many African colonies retain the old economic structures and dependence on imports from the metropolises. President of the Nonprofit Organization Foundation for the Study of Historical Perspective, Natalia Narachnitskaya, or Nitskaya, tried to answer the basic question, why Russia is countering neo-colonialism? In the process, she explained the colossal fluctuations in economy, faith, standards of living, and climate in Africa. The moment of truth for Africa, she continued, is that there must be a change in the economy, that officials should work to ensure that at least infrastructure projects are being implemented in Africa. Chairman of the state, Duma Vyacheslav Volodin, held bilateral meetings with several heads of delegation, speakers of parliament, and chambers of parliament of African countries. On March 19th, a bilateral meeting of the chairman of the state of Duma Vyacheslav Volodin and the speaker of the National Assembly of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Jacob Mudenda, was held at the state Duma. The state Duma and the National Assembly of Zimbabwe signed the agreement in 2022. It's very important to do everything to implement this agreement. We propose to create an interparliamentary commission which will enable us to work more substantively on issues that are important for both our states, Jacob Mudenda emphasized on the, at the meeting. According to him, relations between countries should be built on the principles of mutual respect, mutual beneficial cooperation, and non-interference in the international affairs of sovereign states. Mm. Russia and Zimbabwe now share common political interests. Both are under sanctions. Frequent interactions such as conferences demonstrate the importance of relations at the parliamentary level between Africa and the Russian Federation. They'll significantly advance understanding and strengthen relations between Russia and the countries of Africa. Such meetings will help share experience between the African states and the Russian Federation and develop solutions. There's also an exchange of views and developments of positions on international security. You know these issues are the most relevant now. South Africa's National Assembly Speaker Nasaviwe Mapisa Nkakula supported his suggestion that great capabilities on parliamentary dimension of Russia and South Africa could be used to enhance our cooperation in various areas in South Africa and in Africa. Mapisa Nkakula thanked Vyacheslav Volodin for sending the invitation to take part in the parliamentary conference before adding it's very important for us that Russia gives priority to the African continent. Many countries consider Africa as a great possibility to get African resources, but taking into account the history of our cooperation, we, like many other African countries, believe that Russia has other, more genuine interests in Africa. And from republicworld.com, relationship between African countries and Russia based on equality, says Duma Speaker. The Speaker of Russia's Duma highlighted the country's growing trade and economic cooperation with African states despite what he called illegal sanctions. During the plenary session of the second Russia-Africa International Parliamentary Conference on Monday, Vyacheslav Vladin, the Russian State Duma Speaker, claimed that relations between Russia and Africa countries have been established on the principles of equality and selflessness, according to Vladin. This stands in stark contrast to the colonial policies being pursued by the United States and Europe. It's necessary to emphasize Russia and African countries are equal allies and partners. Our relations have always been built on an unselfish basis, on the principle of mutual respect and non-interference in domestic affairs, he said. As per a report of from TASS, he stressed the fact that African continents have never been a subject of mercantile interests, use of labor and raw material resources for Russia. Volodin accuses U.S. and Europe of a colonial approach. In Volodin's judgment, U.S. and Europe have a completely different approach. Washington and Brussels seek to take control of Russia and Africa natural resources. In fact, they continue their colonial policy. They go to any measure, including force and terrorist nature, for their own benefit, he claimed. Volodin added that Washington cannot dictate to Moscow how it should develop its ties with other regions around the globe. The Speaker of Russia's 
Duma highlighted the country's growing trade and economic cooperation with African states despite what he called illegal sanctions from Washington, according to the politician. Bilateral trade reached $17.9 billion at the end of the last year. In his remarks, the speaker emphasized the increasingly significant role played by the African continent in addressing both religion and relig or regional and global issues, suggesting that this trend is set to continue. A look at Africa's geopolitical importance. Africa is a continent of great geopolitical significance with its vast land mass, abundant natural resources, and strategic location at the crossroads of major trade routes between Europe, Asia, and the Americas. Its importance is further amplified by the fact that its home is this home to some of the fastest growing economies in the world, making it a key player in the global economy. One of the most significant reasons why Africa is geopolitically important is its vast natural resources. The continent is home to some of the world's largest reserves of oil, gas, coal, and other minerals, including gold, platinum, and diamonds. These resources are crucial to the global economy, and many countries depend on them for their energy and manufacturing needs. Additionally, Africa's agricultural potential is enormous, with fertile soil and a diverse range of crops that can feed not only its own population, but also those of other countries. Africa's strategic location is another key factor that makes it geopolitically important. The continent sits at the intersection of major tra trade routes between Europe, Asia, and the Americas. The Suez Canal, which connects the Mediterranean and Red Seas, is a vital shopping route that passes through Africa. Additionally, the continent's proximity to the Middle East, Europe, and Asia has made it a critical hub for global trade, and its ports and shipping lanes are some of the busiest in the world. Moreover, Africa's growing population and rapidly expanding economies are also important geopolitical factors, according to the United Nations. Africa's population is expected to double by 2050, making it the fastest growing region in the world. This growth has the potential to create vast new markets and opportunities for investment and trade, which could help to drive economic growth and development in the region. And from Al Mayadeen, Russia, Africa to jointly build new world order, Putin. Putin announces that Moscow is ready to provide most needed African nations with free grain in the event that Russia decides not to renew the recent 60-day extension deal. Russia President Vladimir Putin said African nations will become one of the main pillars and pioneers of the New World Order, stressing that relations between Russia and Africa are developing to, an un to unprecedented levels, and Moscow aims to expand these ties. Putin made these remarks addressing the Russia-Africa in a multipolar world plenary session as part of the second Russia-Africa International Parliamentary Conference held on Monday, which is attended by representatives of over 40 African countries. African states are constantly increasing their role in world affairs, more and more confidently declare their position in politics and eco economics. We're convinced that Africa will become one of the leaders of the emerging multipolar world order, he said. Despite only accounting for 3% of the world's GDP, African countries are witnessing exponential economic growth. Putin noted, adding that Russia aspires to reach a strategic partnership with the African nations to jointly transition the current global affairs into the new world order. Highlighting that Moscow has dropped over $20 billion of African countries' debt, he emphasized the need to develop coordination and expand cooperation in areas of mutual interest such as energy, health care, and the military field, stressing that Moscow will continue helping the continent expand electrical grids and energy generation. So Africa is at once a leader in having natural resources, but only accounting for 3% of the world GP GDP. And that's due to exploitation of those natural resources. So in a sense, when, when natural resources are devalued, you know, we, d we devalue the world. Not in the sense, literally, actually. Yeah. Uh, who owns those natural resources and how they're disseminated is another story, right? So Russia is ready to send African nations laboratories and medicinal drugs to establish joint efforts in the mutual development of the healthcare sector and the production of medicines, P Putin added. Military technical cooperation continues, including supply of Russian weapons and military equipment to African partners. Putin stated, noting that military service members from over 20 African countries are currently in Russia studying at universities of the Russian Defense Ministry. He also recalled that Russia was one of the first countries to provide Africa with vaccines and other medicinal drugs and hardware to assist the continent's fight against COVID-19 during the pandemic. On the grain deal that was just extended for 60 days, the Russian leader emphasized that Moscow insists 
on the full implementation of the agreement with regards to its terms, including securing a larger amount of the food commodity to the African countries. Out of the total amount of grain and food out of the total amount of grain and food exported from Ukraine, approximately 45% went to European countries and only 3% goes to Africa, Putin explained, revealing that Moscow agreed to the extension of the deal having in mind the need of African countries and other developed nations. Out of 827 grain ships that left Ukraine between August 1st and September 20th of 2022, only 3 million tons of grain were delivered to Africa and only nearly a third reached the poorest African nations. Moscow will demand the full implementation of Russia's main terms to the extension of the deal, including addressing the food needs of African nations rather than well-fed so-called European countries. Despite sanctions and res restrictions, Russia delivered to Africa nearly 12 million tons during the same period, August 1st, September 20th of 2022. Putin underlined. He stressed that Russia has sent almost 12 million tons of grain to African countries despite all restrictions. If Russia decides not to renew this deal after the recent 60-day extension, then it's ready to deliver all the volume that was previously sent to countries in Africa with dire need free of charge, the president added. Towards the end of the address, the president invited the leaders of the African countries to attend the upcoming Russia-Africa summit scheduled in July to take place in St. Petersburg. We're very seriously preparing for the second Russian-African summit and, of course, we'll be glad to see leaders from all African countries as well as heads of regional organizations at this forum. Russia and Africa jointly aim for a just world. On his part, the head of Russia's state, Duma Vyacheslav Vladin, said, Russia and African nations have a mutual goal to build a new multipolar world. Russia and African countries are united by shared goals. We stand together for building a multipolar world, just world based on a just world based on respect for the traditions, culture, and history of the countries with which we're building mutually beneficial cooperation, Vladin said. The conference brought together nations that are aware of the price of independence and how to decide for themselves how to live, he said, stressing that Russia-Africa relations are at a new stage. Africa is the continent of freedom-loving people. Together, we can withstand any external pressure, as we've already done in our history. Friendship's a two-way street, he added. From the Africa Report, Russia draws in Africa with charm offensive against Western neocolonialism. On 19th and 20 March, some 40 African delegations traveled to Moscow ahead of the Russia-Africa summit scheduled for July in St. Petersburg to discuss cooperation and the fight against the influence former colonial powers. There's but one step between Vladimir Putin's office and the Duma in central Moscow. It was at the Russian's parliament headquarters, just a few meters from the Kremlin, that the conference Rus russia Africa and multipolar world was head was held from 1920 March, the second of its kind devoted to strengthening cooperation between Africa and Russian parliamentarians. The meeting came ahead of the next Africa-Russia summit to be held in St. Petersburg at the end of July, four years after the Sochi summit. The Soviet-style building was specially refurbished to accommodate the 40 African delegations. At the opening, opening ceremony, Duma speaker Vyacheslav Vladin gave a speech on Russian and Western influences in Africa. Dear colleagues, it's not Washington that should teach us how to build our friendly relations and plans for the future, he said, defending Russian interests in Africa, which he said had never been mercantile, unlike those of the U.S. and European countries. On Monday, 20 March, Vladimir Putin spoke at the conference between two meetings with Chinese President Xi Jinping, who's on an official three-day visit to Russia. The Russian president insisted on the need to cooperate more with African countries. One of the priorities of his foreign policy before announcing the free delivery of grain to the continent if the food agreement between Russia and Ukraine is not renewed. He also said that African soldiers from some 20 countries were currently being trained in Russia. Among the audience were many African parliamentarians, the president of Mali, Conseil National de la Transition, uh, Colonel Malik Dao, a member of the ruling junta in Bamako, which has made Russia its new ally, denounced the perpetuation of domination by former colonial powers. Usmane Buguma of Burkina Faso, president of l'Assemblée Legislative de la Transition, the TLA, also attended the conference, as did the vice, vice president of Chad, CNT, Malum Yoboidi, Jiraki, and the president of Guinea, CNT, Dansa Koruma. Simplest Matthew Saranji, Central Africa's na National Assembly president, Jacob Mudenda, Zimbabwe's National Assembly spokesperson and Hamoud Abdenasser, Algerian Council Vice President, also took part in roundtables. 
Ganea Basal's parliament speaker Cipriano Katsama met with Volodin on the conference sidelines as he did Saranji Diao and Buguma. After their meeting, Buguma spoke of the creation of a bilateral working commission between Russia and Burkina Faso and reiterated his willingness to cooperate with Moscow, saying, The partnership with Russia is not a short-term phenomenon, it's a long-term choice based on trust. The Duma president also met with Congolese Senate President Pierre Ngolo and South African National Assembly President Nosaviwe Mapis. Mapisa Nkakula. And watch this space. Remember your engagement through a like, a share, and a subscribe will accelerate us at warp speed towards the continuation of our mission to truth.